Hello everyone, myself Dr. Parth and today I am going to teach you cysticercosis and hydrated disease. These two are the parasitic infestation induced disease. And this particular category comes under the infectious group in a pathology. This particular topic comes under competency number PA 10.2 in which students need to know definition, causative organism, mode of transmission, life cycle, morphology of its induced lesion and the clinical feature of this particular two parasitic infestation. So first we will begin with cysticercosis. It will be caused by tapworm infestation, right? It, uh, the disease is induced by parasite and the causative parasite is a tinea solium, it is, which is a tapworm, right? And the resting stage of the larva in an intermediate host is known as a cysticercus, which is a pathogenic one to induce the disease. So, tinea solium pass its life cycle in a two host, definitive and intermediate host. Definitive host means in which a parasite acquire a sexual maturity. They will, uh, they will be grow, they will grow and achieve a sexual maturity into an adult worm, right? But in an intermediate host, the sexual maturity doesn't achieve. And the human is both a definitive as well as intermediate host for the cysticercus. And pig is additionally an intermediate host for this infestation. So let's see the uh, how the infection is transmitted. So it transmitted by a two way ingestion of larval cyst or ingestion of an egg in a contaminated food or water. So if food or water is contaminated with the egg of tinea solium, then patient, then individual might acquire an infection. Uh, predominantly four organs are affected by tinea solium, muscle, skin, heart and the brain. In the brain, it is known as a neurocysticercosis, right? The tinea solium causes a disease because of the deposition of the cyst, cysticerci in organs. In an organ, this larva is deposited and they will initiate an inflammatory response so that the disease will develop. So let's see the life cycle of tinea solium. This is the life cycle. Uh, adult, adult tinea solium worm, right, uh, will be excreted in a feces as an egg, right? Uh, the egg of adult tinea solium, you know, uh, will be transmitted, will be excreted in a feces. Uh, the pigs during the gazing in a field will acquire the infection by ingestion of this egg. So, pig will ingest this egg and so there will be development of larval stage, right? The larval stage is a immature form, the immature form of uh, parasite, right? From the egg, there will be development of larva. So, the de development of larva, cysticercus cellulose in the pig will begin. And the human get infection if the individual is non-vegetarian and eat this pig's meat which contain the cysticercus lar larva, right? So, in that way, human can acquire the infect infestation. All right. And ultimately, it will grow as an adult worm in a human and this life cycle will continue. What's the morphology of the lesion induced by tinea solium? So, you know, the developed cyst will be 0.5 to 1 centimeter. It contains a clear fluid and microscopically it shows the scolex with a four sucker. It shows the four sucker and hook on the wall. It will be viable for a long time and it induces a granulomatous reaction, particularly infiltration of eosinophil can be seen. You know the eosinophils are the allergic cell and they are usually found in an allergic patient, in an asthma patient, in a parasitic infestation patient, right? in a skin allergy. So, in parasite infestation, eosinophil will be increased. So, in the tissue as well, the eosinophil could be increased. And if the parasite die, dystrophic calcification also can be seen. So, this is the photomicrograph of cysticercus larva, larval cyst in a skin, right, with a suckers and hook. So, what would be the clinical feature of tinea solium infestation? So, obviously, if intestine is affected predominantly, then patient will have abdominal pain and diarrhea. But the severe one, that is the need of concern, is the brain involvement. If the brain is involved, then it is known as a neurocysticercosis, in which patient could have convulsion, that is epilepsy, patient could have raised intracranial pressure because of hydrocephalus, 
there could be complication in the form of blurring of vision and other neurological symptom as well so neurological symptom will appear if the patient is having neurocysticercosis if larva is deposited in a brain all right so that was all about the cysticercosis right now let's uh, discuss about the echinococcus or the hydrated disease that is the second parasitic infestation which is also important one right so this particular parasitic infestation will be caused by echinococcus granulosus that's a causative organism and the sexual maturity achieved in a definitive host which include dog jackal or fox and the intermediate host for this parasite is a sheep pig goat or the human and the man usually acquire the infection if they are involved in a handling of a dog or they are eating with a dog right so let's see the life cycle of echinococcus granulosus so as we know the definitive host is a dog jackal or fox so they will have a adult worm in their intestine the egg egg form will be passed in their feces the ingestion of the egg in a feces by a sheep cow or pig which are the intermediate host right so they will ingest the egg during the gazing in a field and ultimately you know carcasses and the larval form will be developed and there will be development of a hydrated cyst in a dog when they ingest this carcasses of infected animal so you know in this way the dog will again got a infection because this uh, carcasses or the larval stage will develop in a adult worm in a dog's intestine now you might have question when man is getting the infection so the humans are getting the infection when the humans are involved with eating with a dog or handling with a dog you know the egg will excrete excrete the egg in their feces so if the humans are handling the dog then they could acquire a infection by contamination right contaminated food or water you know during handling with a dog they could acquire a infection and there would be development of hydrated cyst in a human particularly develop in brain liver or lung so what would be the morphology of hydrated cyst so the develop hydrated cyst in a human by echinococcus granulosus can grow beyond the 10 cm so it's very dangerous and if if it rupture then anaphylactic reaction can occur 65% cyst commonly found in the liver but lung and brain also could be affected if you observed it in a microscopically by biopsy then there there will be three layers of hydrated cyst pericyst ectocyst and endocyst pericyst name itself suggest it is a outer layer it's a capsular layer right to which there will be inflammatory reaction in a human body in a form of fibroblast giant cell eosinophil right then the second layer is ectocyst which is a intermediate layer between peri and endocyst it's a non nucleated layer right the second one non nucleated layer and it might have delicate laminations so that is the ectocyst then endocyst which is a inner nucleated germinative layer with a daughter cyst and scolysis that's the important one the endocyst is germinative layer one and they have the daughter cyst and scolysis so it's a nucleated you can see this is the nucleated inner layer right nucleated inner endocyst is seen the degenerated scolysis produce sometime produces a fine grain sand like sediment which is known as a hydrated sand so that's a hydrated sand right it's a degenerated scolysis that will produces a fine grain sand like sediment and that's because of degeneration of the scolysis all right what would be the clinical feature of uh, hydrated disease so if the liver is involved then pressure effect could be seen there uh, there could be abdominal pain uh, and you know if it is ruptured then there will be severe anaphylactic reaction if the brain is involved then epilepsy and convulsion like that of symptom can occur if the renal system is involved and if the kidney 
if the hydatid cyst develop in a kidney then patient could complain of hematuria blood in a urine can be there because of traumatic injury to the renal vessels or uh, ureter right if the cyst is ruptured then patient could have anaphylaxis so that's all about the echinococcosis as well this is a very short tutorial on cysticercosis and echinococcosis both are parasitic infestation these are the references for my today's lecture so hope it will make your fundamental clear about these two parasitic infestation we will be right back with a new video till then take care and bye bye thank you very much for the listening thank you